Nice boy, good boy. That's my boy. Heel. Good boy. Nice work, Kenny. Place. Good job. Good job. Break. Nice work. Nice work. Place. Nice. You just place. Good. He's getting good at that. Nice work. Kill. Place. That's a good boy. I, I really think you're doing well. Good boy. Down. That's a good boy. Down. Good. They, they um, messaged me asking how he did with the thunderstorm. And oh, I, I like, noticed him. I think he was fine. He did fine, and they said he has really bad storm anxiety. I'm like, yeah. Not here. Yeah. The thing is about that, the interesting thing about that, like the fear responses to that stuff is they know not to break their commands, so they just, all the, all the, the behavior that you normally see from a stressful situation, the barking, the digging at, at, what, at the kennel, the going crazy, all that goes away because he's in a down state and he prioritizes that over top of the fear. And then that allows them to realize that there's nothing to fear. So it's actually, we'll start to make progress on it. We've, we've had dogs that left here that had really bad thunderstorm issues. And we have the owners use place during the thunderstorm. And the dog who normally ran and tried to hide could not hide anymore. And soon, after a few thunderstorms, started to make a lot of progress. Because they have to sit on the bed. They can't go run away from it. And they soon realize that those noises, they don't equal any physical harm. Okay? But they're never going to know that if they, if they run away. They think they escape the harm. So understanding this simple, uh, the way that this works behaviorally really informs you how to get your dog with the thunderstorms. It's not as difficult as you think, it just takes consistency. See the way he looks at her? I definitely want to trust them a lot. <laughs> like pray? Yeah, he's, he's a good dog good-natured dog, but his prey drive will lead him to killing small animals like this. It's just how it is. It's just how it is, you know. That's not to say he can't bond with dogs and see them as family. Or even a cat, maybe, if he sees them as family. If it happens the right way or if he bonded with them in his early years, then it's good if he sees you as family. If he does not see you as family and you're small and fluffy, there's a high chance that he's going to see you as food. It's just prey drive. He's not even thinking food. It's the sequence of chase and catch is really what, what, what is strong in this breed sometimes, you know? And to choose fight over flight and all that good stuff. Down. Good. We're really working on just the chin down with him because you can see when he's laying down on the, on the floor, he'll go to the side and ask him down because that's what he did naturally the first time and it was very, very beneficial for him to lay there and kind of submit to the situation so we allowed it 
to be that way. Now we're trying to ask for just the head down on the place there. He's doing well. Break. Break. That's the right word. Okay. So, I mean, we just went for a walk with him. We're living with him now. He's a very, I would say he's pretty easy to live with. As long as you know who he is and what to look out for. He definitely likes to, you know, if he doesn't know the dog, he can be a little dominant. He can be snippy. He can cause fights. He can get into fights. It's going to happen. He's got a dominance complex, just like a lot of these men dogs that come in here. Another thing, though, is his prey drive. He, that kicks in really fast, and, he turn, and you see this like primitive look in his eyes where it's just like he's not even home in the morning. That happens like this if you're not managing him. He can go from that to just tunnel vision onto a cat, a small dog, a squirrel, doesn't matter. So what we do is we tell him, don't enter those states of mind. Stay in this state of mind. And if you start to enter that state of mind, I'll notice it because I, I know what to do, right? I'm, the, I'm now the owner that knows what to look for, and I see you going into that state, I can correct, and it brings you right back into the calm state where we're, we're safe and reliable. If we allow him to go into these more aroused states, fixation, dominance, prey drive, and we don't correct, his decisions are going to be piss poor and probably dangerous. Yeah. That's how it is. But if we manage him and say, hey, stay focused on, on me when, when we're out together, do as I say, don't do this, don't do that, and stay calm, that's management, then we got a decent life together. Pretty good life. Pretty easy. But don't think that he's a happy-go-lucky lad that we're going to bring to the dog park and let him socialize. No, no, you got a predator right here that that, that will kick in and then you, you're you going to feel like you don't have control of him. And, and that's not a good feeling. So, he's got rules, he's got commands, and he can be uh, live a nice life together. But we know where his shortcomings are. And so, we look out for him when we lead him. We don't put him in situations that's going to cause him to trigger. And if he does start to trigger, we correct and we bring him back. That's what we're giving him. We're giving you the ability to catch the error, touch a button, and go on about your day. Okay? Good boy. You're doing good. That's why you're seeing him around all these dogs, and he's not doing anything. It's not that he doesn't want to go up and have that conversation with Riggins, or go figure out what this fluffy thing is running across the lawn. He still has the desire to do those things. He just respects the system, the training, and more importantly, the person who's talking to him, enough to listen and to ignore that stuff. That's all that's happening. It looks nice, it looks great, but at the end of the day, if he's with somebody he doesn't respect, he's gonna be pushing all those boundaries and breaking all the rules. It's just how it works with some of these guys, and he's one of them, you know? But if he respects you, he will do his best for you, especially if you're consistent with your corrections. He will be trying to please you which is what he's doing right now. That's why he laid down. He's trying to say, what would this guy want me to do right now? And that's when you say, that's when people run into you and say, wow, what a good dog. He's just making good choices. You, can, you have to create this. And so that's what we're creating here. And we're saying certain things are definitely off limits. Those states of mind that you entered, no, no, no. And the thing is, is this stuff really works. The dog really understands you. We watch dogs start to head into, like the shepherd, he likes to be dominant. He'll start to have a dirty thought, what we call it when they're thinking about humping or fighting or something like that. He starts to have a third dirty thought, and because he was corrected in the past, as soon as that mind flipped, he corrects himself. And he says, oh, I'm not supposed to do that. So now we got a dog who's aware of what they're not supposed to do, and they're consciously self-regulating. Best case scenario, right? I mean, this is the best you can get. You gotta, not only is your dog trying to, to not do the bad behavior, if they do start to slip up, you can reinforce what you don't want. No, remember, we don't do that, and it works. But if you think that training like this, which is high-end training, means that there's no work involved with your dog, nah, kiki. Come on. <laughs> I mean, 
you gotta, you gotta help the guy out here, right? <laughs> I mean, but the point is, he knows not to do it. And he respects, and then of course, I, now, I would treat him differently if there, was a, if there was tension, if there was a hard stare, dirty thought, right? Body stiffens, he starts looking at her like this. That's a correction, why? He didn't snap at her, no, but he was thinking about it and he didn't stop himself from thinking about it. If you let this guy think about it, then that's what we call loading. He says, cat, right? And right there, if you were doing things right, he's like, no, 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 <laughs> that's a trap. Don't look at the cat. Okay, that's when things are going right. But what if temptation's too much? Cat, locked and loaded, tension, 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 explosion. Period. And, and it can go, and that's when people say, it came out of nowhere. No, it didn't. You just weren't looking. Or you just didn't know what to look for. Right? So with him, I know that I can trust him with me because the respect's there. We would be giving the owners that level of respect and showing them how to get it and how to maintain it because it does matter to a guy like this. It does. He needs to believe you. And all that is is being consistent, guys. If you're inconsistent, then he's going to know there's a chance that you might not follow through. And if it's worth it, he'll gamble. And he'll do the bad behavior. Place, that's a good boy. And right now we're doing some boring drills. We do say that it's boring because it is kind of boring. For us and the dog. But it's taking a test. We need to make sure that we know our skills. We can't have a dog who has an issue with other dogs or other animals. We can't have a, a, a misunderstanding with the commands. He's got to get those. Good boy. Good boy. So I hope this clears up a little bit about his disposition. He's not alone out there. It is rare, but he's not alone. These guys are they're out there, and it takes a certain type of owner to, to be committed to making sure he has the best life possible without messing up your life or anybody else's life. Being a good boy and doing what he's told, and he'll have a good life. Okay, but no more concerning himself with everything. He's, he's, he's concerning himself with what you tell him to concern himself. Yeah, he used to bark out the windows. Everything. This guy yeah. barks at everything. Barking out the windows, barking. Just he, up and down he the fence line. He did bark here finally yesterday for the first time because he was going through a honeymoon phase. And it was a long honeymoon phase because usually they last like a couple days. It lasted like a week where. He was just on his best behavior because he had already been to a previous trainer, trainer, so he's already wise about like, these are trainers, be on your best behavior, but he eventually slipped up. And when I walked in with a different beard and a different hat, boom, 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 first time I actually heard his voice in a week. Of course, we correct that because we're consistent and we, we tell him, no, we don't like that. But that was the first time we had a correct barking. That just shows that everything's connected. If you're wondering why, well, why isn't he barking there? It's because every experience is connected. So from the minute we grab the leash, if we're starting to tell him not to pull, not to run through the door, not to rush in and out of the kennel, to come on calls. And then we put him in the kennel where he normally does all this barking and he's not barking. That's because, and this is something you gotta remember, is like your relationship to your dog is your, all your experiences in the past. So all he knows of this place and us since he came here was listen to what you're told, be quiet and pay attention. That's kind of the vibe with a difficult dog that comes through here. So when he gets in the kennel, did not make peace. And no storm anxiety. No storm anxiety. Because the thing is, the trick is, what we already talked about is we did teach him down and we teach everything with respect. We're not, we're not doing it saying do it for a piece of food. We're saying do it because I'm a human. And I'm asking you to. Dogs like this need to be at that level. Simply because I am a human. That's it. Just listen. Don't even question. And so, he's in his bound in the kennel. That's the rule in the kennel. So, what's he going to do? If he gets afraid, he's going to say, well, I'm not allowed to stand out. I'm not allowed to, definitely not allowed to dig at the kennel. It's definitely not allowed to bark. I'm just going to sit here and hear the thunder. And maybe he did. Maybe he did get nervous. And maybe he did shake. I don't know, because he didn't make a noise. We didn't, even, we didn't even check on him. He just, the thunder really went through. Nobody made a noise. Everybody's fine. But even if he did, he's staying in his down. He hears it, hears it. He sees the other dogs aren't flipping out. He realizes nothing bad's happening. The down, the structure, the respect, the authority is what allowed him to get over 
of Eden is what's going to continue to allow him to get over those types of fears so that he can experience them and realize that it's just a superstition because that noise will never harm him. It, it will never harm him. So it is, a, it is a belief that's not even accurate and he needs to see that. So, um, but then again, that's how dogs can be. If you don't, if you don't raise them and like, like you would a child and show them the world and how to respond to certain situations, people forget to raise their dogs. They just assume that the dog will figure it out. And sometimes the dog does. Most of the time they don't figure it out to your standards and they become a pain in the ass. And then they become, then they come to a place like this.